Hello, this is Professor Shannon Gracie from Miracosta College. Section 7.4 from the Blitzer text, uh, Introductory and Intermediate Algebra for College Students, is the first section, first new section for our Intermediate Algebra class. So welcome to the class again, and here we go. Why don't we go ahead um, and pause the video so that you guys can do this warm-up. And our goal for this section is to find the least common denominator and be able to add and subtract rational expressions that have different denominators. All right, so go ahead and pause the movie and warm it up. Okay, let's see how you did. Um, for for continuity's sake, what I, I'll, I'll use the same color every time I'm getting a common denominator. And so for this one here, do you guys see that both 8 and 12, um, the smallest number they both multiply out to be will be 24, so therefore 24 is the least common denominator. So 8 needs to be multiplied by 3. We need to balance everything out by multiplying by 1. So 3 over 3 is the 1 that we pick for the fraction on the left. The fraction on the right is 12, so we only need to multiply 12 by 2 to get 24. And to balance it out, we multiply that numerator by 2 as well. So this gives us negative 9 over 24 and then plus 10 over 24. You can make that one happy fraction since we now have the same size pieces of 24. And so we end up with 1 24th as our final result when we combine the negative 9 and the 10. How'd you do? Awesome! All right, next up, uh, part B. Notice that this time we have the same denominator. Do you see that? So when you have the same denominator, it's all ready for us to combine like terms in the numerators. So let's make this one happy fraction so that plus a negative becomes a minus 1. And then we've got x squared plus x is our common denominator. Now we'll get x plus 1 in the numerator. And notice that we can factor out an x from the denominator. And we get x times quantity x plus 1. So notice that these are common factors. So at the end of the day, we get 1 over x times 1 is x, and we're all set. Okay, how'd we do on that guy? Did we at least get to the x plus 1 over x squared plus x part? All right, well, that's a good start. You just need to remember at the end of the day, you need to factor both the numerator and the denominator and see if you can divide out any like factors. Okay, so on with the lesson. The first part of the lesson is all about how the heck do we find the least common denominator, which is shortened LCD. Okay, so the least common denominator of several rational expressions is a polynomial. Consisting, oh, sorry, this should have been a lowercase o, of the product of all prime factors. in the denominators with each factor 
raised to the greatest power of its occurrence in any denominator. So here we go. Here's the steps. Okay. So you're going to be doing a lot of this during the semester, so get used to it. It starts with an F. It's not a bad word. You got it. Factor. So you want to factor each denominator completely. You list the factors of the first denominator. Then you add to the list in step two any factors of the second denominator. And you keep going, okay, that do not appear in the list, you keep going for all the denominators. Then you form the product of the factors from the list in step 3, and this product is the LCD. So here we go. Now, make sure you don't get confused about this. This first example, we're just finding the LCD. We are not making equivalent fractions. We're just finding the LCD so you can learn that process. Um, after this, we'll be learning how to put it all together and um, and then we would find not only the LCD but the equivalent fraction so that we can add or subtract. So here we go. Our first denominator is 25x squared. Now if you factor that, do you see we would get 5 squared times x squared? We good so far? Awesome. Now 35x is equal to 5 to the 1 times 7 to the 1 times x to the 1. So the LCD, any, any, any variable or factor that shows up, you know, more than once, you use the highest power of. So here we go. The 5's, notice there's a 5 squared, so we're going to use the 5 squared. You don't need to worry about this 5 to the 1 um, from the second denominator because it's taken care of in the 5 squared from the first denominator. But we do need that 7 to the 1, and we need the x squared. Again, the x squared from the first denominator takes care of all the powers of x we need, so we don't need to worry about this x to the 1. We're looking for the least common denominator. So this ends up being... If we multiplied it out, actually, you know, we can keep it in factored form. Um, if one were to multiply it out, you'd have 25 times 7, um, which is, dun, dun, dun. I think it's going to be 175, but we'll double check. Yes, 175. So this would end up being 175x squared. That is the LCD. Okay. All right. Go ahead and pause the movie and you try part B on your own. And we'll see how you did in a couple minutes. Okay, let's see how you did. The first denominator is y squared minus 49, which is a difference of squares. So you get y plus 7 times y minus 7. And each of those are raised to the 1 power. Now, y squared minus 14y plus 49 is a perfect square trinomial, so it factors as y minus 7, the quantity squared, or if you worked it out by hand, you would have gotten y minus 7 times y minus 7. So the LCD will be, we need the y plus 7 from the first one, that's to the 1 power, and the y minus 7 squared is the one that we'll use because that's the highest power of that factor. So that is the LCD for these 
to rational expressions. Let me fix my parentheses there. All right. So moving right along, well, why the heck do we need LCDs? Well, we want to be adding like, you know, we want to be adding um, rational expressions with same size pieces. So um, the LCD is all about getting the same size pieces. Right, so um, this is the the step for the next operation. You find the LCD of the rational expressions. You rewrite each rational expression as an equivalent expression. So this is something that we'll be working into the next you know, the next step, whose denominator is the LCD. We add or subtract numerators, depending on what the operation is, placing the resulting expression over the LCD. If possible, simplify. So you're going to have to factor at the end if it's able to be factored to see if we can divide anything out. And here we go, right? So add or subtract is indicated. This one will be adding. And so here we go. I'm going to start off a little bit slower. I'm going to identify how we're finding the LCD. Um, you know, not everybody will need to go at this pace. If you are getting the correct answer using reasonable math, <laughs> then you can step it up a little. But I'll go a little slower um, for those of you who are unsure, right? So first step, find the LCD, right? So the, I'll do it over here for this one. 6x is the same as 2 times 3 times x. 8x is equal to 2 cubed times x if I'm getting it into prime factors. So, the LCD, what do we use? Good, we'll use the 2 cubed because that has most of the powers, uh, or the highest number of powers of 2. And then we've got to use the 3 and we've got to use the X. And that, of course, is equal to 24 X's. So, for the first the first fraction, we need to multiply by, good, 4 over 4. And for the second fraction, we need to multiply by, you got it, 3 over 3. Each of those adjustments gives us 24x in the denominator. So this will yield a result of 20 for the first one. I'll just write it out this time over 24x's plus 21 over 24x's. Now that we have the same denominator, we can write it just one time since we're adding. So 24x's will be the denominator. 20 plus 21 is in the numerator because once you have the same denominator and you're adding, you add the numerators. And this will give us an end result of 41 over 24 x's. And it's the end result because there are no common factors. Right? So here was our scratch work for the LCD. How are we doing? You hanging in there? <laughs> okay. So here's the next problem. So remember, if you just have a, a number there, um, it's the same as having it over 1. 
Okay. So do you guys see that the LCD in this case is just going to be X or 1X, if you will? So if we multiply, we just need to adjust that first one and multiply that 3 by x over x. So we'll get 3x over x plus 1 over x. Now we can write that over the LCD. And when we add the numerators, we get 3x plus 1. And we can't factor that further, so we're all done. Good so far? Okay, so this guy's a little bit more complicated, right? Um, with any of these problems, you are welcome to pause the movie. In fact, I highly recommend that you pause the movie, try it yourself, and, um, and then check your work by uh, playing the movie again. I'm just going to keep on working here. Um, I am going to you know, have faith that you'll pause the movie and try these problems um, as we go on. It's very easy to think you know what you're doing if um, you're watching me do all the work. <laughs> all right, so here we go. What will the LCD be? Well, we've got, do you see that the first, you know, denominator is 3x, which is just 3 times x. You can't factor that. Same with x plus 3. That's equal to a factor of x plus 3. All right, I'll put that in parentheses because that's one factor. So the LCD is going to be 3 times x times x plus 3. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to, I don't want to squeeze all this together. So we'll have 2 over 3 times x. And what is that one missing? Good, that guy is missing the x plus 3 over x plus 3. And then we have plus x over x plus 3. And what's that rational expression missing? Good, we need the 3x, so we'll do 3x over 3x. Now, here we go. What I'm going to do, I'm going to step it up a little. This is going to be over 3x times quantity x plus 3. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to distribute the 2 through that x plus 3. So we'll get 2x plus 6. So this multiplication here yielded this result. And then we'll have plus 3x squared. And that came from this x times the 3x got 3x squared. All right, so far? OK, so now we need to combine like terms which actually there are none, so I'll just put this in descending order. So we have 3x squared plus 2x's plus 6 over 3x times x plus 3. Now, if you need to, you can double check. If you were to make, you know, the x or however it is that you check if something's factorable, overall product is getting, is from the 6 times the 3, which is a positive 18. It needs to, the, when you combine like terms, you need to have a sum of positive 2. There are no two numbers that have a product of positive 18 and a sum of 2, so therefore it's prime, which means you have simplified and you're done. You can put your happy box around the answer and get on with your life. Okay, next up, again working with the LCD, first denominator is y minus 5, second denominator y is just equal to y, neither one of these were able to be factored further, 
So our LCD will be y times y minus 5. So again, I don't, well, I might be able to put this one in neatly. Do you see that the first one is missing y over y multiplied to that stuff there? And then this guy is missing y minus 5 over y minus 5. And any time, you know, you have um, binomials, you might want to put, or binomials or trinomials, you might want to put parentheses around them so that you don't make up any of your own math. Don't worry, I do it too. All right. So here we are. It's all going to be over y times y minus 5, which was our LCD. y times y gives us y squared, so that's from the first part. And then we'll have minus y minus 5 times y minus 5 is going to be y squared minus 10 y's plus 25, right? That's, that's what happens when uh, you use the special product rule. Um, you can also multiply it out. You would have gotten y squared minus 5y minus 5y plus 25. So here we go. This times this yielded this result. All right, so now y squared minus y squared is 0 y squared. So do you see the sign is going to flip on each of these? We're going to end up with 10y because the y squared's 0 out. Minus a minus is plus, And then we'll have minus 25 over y times y minus 5. We can factor that numerator, so let's check it out. If I factor out a 5, I will get 2y minus 5 over y times y minus 5. And I'm, I'm done there. Even though 2y minus 5 looks kind of similar to y minus 5, it's not exactly the same. So we are unable to divide it out, which means we're done. Okay. So... I'm going to give you another another prompt here. Why don't you go ahead and pause the movie and you you give E and F a shot and see how you do. And they're, you know, a little bit a little bit more challenging, but I have faith that you can handle them. So pause the movie and then check your work and after you're done. Okay, let's see how you did. So over here, we have x squared minus 5x plus 6 factors as x minus 2 times x minus 3. Uh, if you need any further review factoring, you may want to go back to 6.5. That's a great review for factoring. I did assign that in the beginning. So, um, or just practice um from, you know, the factoring assignment that will be helpful to you. There are, is also a study plan, so anything that you missed in the factoring assignment will show up in your study plan as well. So use all those tools that you have in my math lab. So let's see, the other denominator is x minus 3, which is just x minus 3. So the LCD will just be x minus 2 times x minus 3. So do you see that no adjustment is needed for the first the first um, rational expression? It's just this guy that we need to adjust. And it's missing, you got it, an x minus 2 over x minus 2. Again, we're going to put parentheses in here. So this will yield a result of 3x plus 7 minus 3 times x minus 2 all over x minus 2. 
times x minus 3 because remember this first one that's what that factors to be. So now we will get 3x plus 7 minus 3x plus 6. So here, this part here with the minus included is where we got these two terms. And that is over the least common denominator of x minus 2 times x minus 3. So we will have the three x's will zero out. 7 plus 6 is 13. So at the end of the day, we get 13 over x minus 2 times x minus 3. And we're all done. Did you do well on that one? Awesome. Okay. Here we go on this guy x squared minus 36 factors to be x plus 6 times x minus 6 and then x plus 6 squared of course is just x plus 6 the quantity squared so notice this one is to the 1 power so we're going to choose the x plus 6 quantity squared for the LCD so our LCD will be x minus 6, just to the 1, that's from here, and x plus 6 squared. So here we go. I'll go ahead and rewrite this one so we can more easily see what's missing. So what do we have missing from this first fraction? Good, we need another factor of x plus 6 in order to get that LCD. So you see x plus 6 times x plus 6 is x plus 6, the quantity squared. And then this next guy has the x plus 6 squared. So what is this guy missing? Good, just the x minus 6 over x minus 6. So we will have, oh, and I should have put parentheses around this guy. So we will have 5x plus 30 from the first parentheses. Our LCD is x plus 6, the quantity squared, times x minus 6, which is the same as this. I've just commuted the factors. And then we'll have plus 3x minus 18. So the first, this 5 times x plus 6 yielded a result of 5x plus 30. And then the positive 3 times x minus 6 yielded a result of 3x minus 18. So when we combine like terms, we'll have 8x plus 12 over x plus 6 squared times x, oops, minus 6. And we can factor the numerator, so let's go ahead and factor a 4 out, and we're left with 2x plus 3 over x plus 6, the quantity squared, times x minus 6. And there is nothing we can divide out, so that is our final result. And we're done. How'd that one go? Awesome. Okay, on to the next. Now, this next one can take a bit of strategizing. You have to recognize that you have opposite uh, denominators or opposite factors in the denominator, so it can get a wee bit tricky. Um, but here we go. This is the next step. When one denominator contains the opposite factor 
of the other. First, multiply either rational expression by negative 1 over negative 1. And then apply the procedure for adding or subtracting rational expressions. And we've been learning about adding or subtracting rational expressions that have different denominators. Okay, here we go. So this is what I would recommend. I would still, I would still do the work on the side about the LCDs so you can kind of see where you're at. Um, so, for example, the first denominator, 4x plus 12, factors as 4 times x plus 3. This is where the strategizing comes in. Do you see here for 9 minus x squared, you have a difference of squares, and that would end up being 3 plus x times 3 minus x, and you'd end up having an opposite, you know, an opposite factor. So here, if you were to go ahead and multiply this by negative 1 over negative 1, okay, then you would end up with, so we'd have x plus 7 over 4 times quantity x plus 3, and then plus a negative x over x squared minus 9 then that might look more similar to what you're used to because x squared minus 9 factors as x plus 3 times x minus 3. Honestly, this one wouldn't turn out that much differently because what ended up being, you know, similar was the x plus 3. And x plus 3 is equivalent to 3 plus x. But this is the procedure you use if it would have ended up being the other one. If you had had x minus 3 and 3 minus x, that would have been different. So we'll just kind of cruise along with this. Do you see that the LCD will end up being x plus 3 times x minus 3? So we'll go ahead and continue. So the first one, x plus 7 over 4 times x plus 3 needs x minus 3 over x minus 3. And then over here, we already have the LCD of x plus 3 times x minus 3. So when we multiply x plus 7 times x minus 3, we will get x squared minus 3x's plus 7x's minus 21, and then minus an x from that second rational expression. Oh, actually, here we go. What did I forget? What did I forget just now? The LCD will be, good, I need a times 4, do you see that? Because of 4 times x plus 3. So bad teacher, see, I make up my own math too, right? But it's not too late to save the problem. Do you see if we do 4 over 4, I'll do it over here times 4 over 4, I can complete that. So instead of minus 1x, I'll have minus 4x. Okay. So then that will be under the LCD of 4 times x plus 3 times x minus 3.
All right, so now we'll have, let's see, x squared x. So you do you see that the four x's will zero out, and then we'll have minus 21 over 4 times x plus 3 times x minus 3. And we're all done. All right. So here we go, this next guy. First denominator, x squared minus y squared factors as, good, you got it, x plus y times x minus y. Now notice about that y minus x. Do you see that? It would be fabulous if it was flipped, so it's, it's an opposite from one of the other ones. So we're going to end up with 5x over x plus y times x minus y minus negative 2 over x minus y. So what, so now we can go ahead and say, oh, okay, that second denominator, x minus y, is just x minus y, which is already represented. So the LCD will be x plus y times x minus y. So what is the second denominator missing? Good, it's missing and x plus y over x plus y. So we'll end up with 5x plus, minus and minus is plus, and then we'll have 2x plus 2y over x plus y times x minus y. So at the end of the day, we'll have 7x's plus 2y's over x plus y times x minus y. And that is in simplified form because we can't factor either one of those further. Okay. <laughs> Best for last, guys. Why don't you pause the movie and give, give this one a shot and see how you do. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, you can, you can wa start it back up and, and watch how I work it out. All right? I know you can do it. At least get the LCD. All right, ready? On your mark, get set, go. Pause the movie, give this one a shot. It's the last problem of the section. Alrighty, let's see how you did. Let's figure out our LCD. Y squared minus Y minus 12 is equal to Y minus 4 times Y plus 3. Now see this 4 minus Y business? So we're going to need to adjust that one. So again, we're going to be strategic, and we're going to multiply that guy by minus 1 over minus 1. And then the third one will end up being fine. So here's what we'll have. We'll have 7y minus 2 over y minus 4 times y plus 3 plus negative 2y over y minus 4 plus y, I'm going to leave a, a space here so we can multiply by what we need, plus y plus 1 over y plus 3. So let's look at these denominators. y minus 4 is equal to y minus 4, that's already represented, and y plus 3 equals y plus 3, so that's already represented. So the LCD is just y minus 4 times y plus 3. Okay, so what is the second rational expression missing? Good, y plus 3 over 
y plus 3. And the third rational expression was missing y minus 4 over y minus 4. Okay, so here we go. Now I'm just going to write that LCD one time. So y minus 4 times y plus 3. We'll have 7y minus 2 minus 2y's. Actually, I'll multiply that through. Minus 2y squared, that's from negative 2y times y. Negative 2y times 3 will be minus 6y. And then plus y squared minus 4y plus 1y minus 4. So let's just show you where all that came from. The negative 2y times y plus 3 gave us negative 2y squared minus 6y. And y plus 1 times y minus 4 gave us this one here. So here we go. We will have, let's see, let's look at the highest uh, power of y. So negative 2y squared plus 1y squared is going to give us negative y squared. 7y minus 6y is 1y minus 4y is negative 3y, and you add 1y and you get minus 2y. And now minus 2 minus 4 is minus 6, and that's all over y minus 4 times y plus 3. Now the easiest way to see if this guy will factor is to factor out the negative. So I'm going to factor out the negative. If you put it same, you know, the same as the fraction bar, you basically you take out a negative from each of the terms in the numerator. So they're all going to flip and turn positive when I factor out the negative. Then you got to think about are there two numbers that multiply out to be positive 6 and have a sum of positive 2 and there are not, so that is prime. So the end result is this, or you could have had the original one with the negatives inside. They're both fine. Mathematicians tend to think the second one's a bit prettier. All right, so 7.4 is all done. Have a fabulous day. Make sure you do the problem set in uh, my math lab that corresponds to this lecture as soon as possible so you don't forget everything. All right, bye.